Good morning all, how's it hanging? So I was in uh, Wilco yesterday and um, I bought all sorts of things actually. Now I can't say all sorts of things because then I'd have to show all the things I bought. Actually, why don't I do that? Why don't I show all the things I bought? Um, well, there are these uh, G450 Lumen lamps. This pack of two I bought for two pounds. And they're going to be the subject of this video. And I bought them because they just looked really incredibly interesting. Um, another thing I bought is this, which looked uh, really interesting to me. It's a filament lamp bulb. It looks enormous. And um, until you realise that this is just a solar powered garden hanging ornament, it's, um, it's hard to quite understand why they've done this. Uh, it really is absolutely horrid outside cold and rainy so if i block the uh, solar panel like so you can see that the filaments light up mm, they're not showing up very well on the camera just a second uh, let's have it a bit darker of course i want to make a video on this so i don't want to give too much away but um yeah there are the four led filaments but i mean the battery inside there let's just reset the exposure is going to be very tiny so it must have quite an interesting circuit i'll say no more um the third thing was this bathroom weighing scales now you tap it i think to power it on um quite a minimalist design it's really just a piece of glass with um this sort of plastic assembly on it and i'm assuming that these pipes are there because there are wires running down here and this thing actually has four of these um, pressure sensors so force transducers because um, force equals mass times acceleration so if you want to calculate mass we know acceleration that's the uh, gravity constant well it's constant at sea level I suppose so do we think that it simply adds the four forces together to um, come up with the actual weight it keeps rebooting itself uh, mine of course is set to stones and pounds but you can set it to just pounds for american people or just kilograms for european people we strangely i think are pretty unique in the world using uh stones and pounds for body weight runs off a cr2032 so yeah i quite liked this one and yes it is for me and uh finally there's this clock runs off a standard single aa um, quite a nice clock. I wanted a radio controlled one because we just recently had to change all the clocks because of stupid daylight saving time. Very boring. This thing changes itself automatically. Um, what's intriguing about this is that there are three buttons on the back. Set, Rec and Reset. The manual that came with this only mentions two of them and it gives Rec, I think, and Reset pretty much identical functionality so it says you know if the thing goes wrong just press reset and then in a separate paragraph it says press rec doesn't mention set at all so what on earth do these three buttons do um another interesting thing about this is that this one uses msf which um used to be in rugby it was the 60 kilohertz transmitter in rugby it's now moved up to cumbria i read um that little digital clock i bought oh some time ago from lidl Lidl being a German company, of course, that used the German um, transmitter somewhere in Germany. I can't remember exactly where. Um, this one uses the UK transmitter. But uh, yeah, today's video, I suppose I should uh, wipe this rain away. Um, today's video is about these quite intriguing G4 LED lamps. Let's uh, get in a little bit closer. Uh, oh, that's not closer, is it? That's a bit closer. So yeah, I bought these because um, this pack was two lamps for two pounds. So they're a pound each. And when you look at them, they're incredibly intricate. I mean, look at the number of LEDs on there. There are one, two, three, four, five, six times eight. Six, eight is 48. There's an additional nine on the top. That's 50 something LEDs. And you can see all the circuitry there. So I can... Have a look at what makes this tick, um, including that inductor there. Look at that a little inductor and a massive capacitor. It's a 107. Um, I'm assuming it's tantalum. Those sort of um, square uh, yellow ones normally are tantalum. I suppose it could be 
aluminium, but uh, no, my guess is tantalum, but how intriguing. Now I've cut a hole in the bottom of there. Oh, I was going to make a comment about um, pound shop stuff. This to me is sort of pound shop pricing. These are a pound each, um, but without the nonsense that's going on in pound shops these days where half their stock is more than a pound. I've pretty much given up on pound shops. I don't think I'll bother going there again. Um, yeah, so I've cut this hole in the end there. And the idea of that is that I can take my um, solar power uh, voltage. This is ooh, currently 13.1 volts and poke it in the hole. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Oh, by the way, these have a sticker saying 12 volts and under that sticker, it says 230 volts. So they must have um, produced these cardboard packs all wrong. And then someone had to sit and stick 12 volt stickers on because it seems that the G4 bulb is a 12 volt bulb. I recently looked at something similar, a G9 um, LED lamp. And of course that one was mains, but this one is 12 volts. So let's plug that in there. I think you can see how this is intended to work. It's a little bit hit or miss, but yeah, that works well. Um, let's see if I can lower the exposure. Okay, the exposure's locked, so yeah, there it is, all lit up. All 60 something, or was it 50 something LEDs and all the electronics. Now, of course, um, quite a few of these components are diodes and we need those diodes. Oh, you can see a little 12 volts there. We need those diodes, of course, because on bulbs, there's no concept of polarity. So you have to be able to let people plug this in either way round and the diodes, presumably in a bridge rectifier formation, um, handle the polarity issue. Um, so what are they saying here? 150 lumens, 2.5 watts is equivalent to 16 watts of incandescent. Um, now this is very, very interesting. Lasts up to 25 years with a tiny little asterisk. Um, 25 years. I mean, I know what they're getting at. They're saying that LEDs have a very, very long lifespan. Um, and yes, I suppose the LEDs themselves, if not driven too hard, could last up to 25 years. But typically the electronics, and I mean, we know, don't we, that it's always the capacitors that fail. They never last these sort of periods of time. So they've made this claim about, and it's here, look, um, all measurements are approximate 25 years if used 2.7 hours per day, sort of a, a, a lifespan based on um, the LEDs. But I think that's just totally unrealistic. If you factor in um, the capacitor and other components, which we know just fail. Right, let's get this box open. Blister packs. Don't you just hate them? Because I want to take as close a look at one of these lamps as I can. That one then. Yeah, that's really strange. This thing's um, encased in kind of like silicon sealant. It's sort of squidgy and rubbery. And it's got a sort of sticky texture. That's really weird. I've never seen anything like that before. Right, so what have we got? Well, we've got lots of these LEDs and they've seen fit to put them at these in interesting jaunty angles. So someone had some fun with their PCB layout software, didn't they? I wonder why they went for that. I mean, yes, you can see that they're connected there and connected there probably. They're probably in a series string, but they didn't have to lay them out at interesting angles, but it does give this a rather nice appearance, doesn't it? Um, 470, so that was that 47 uh, micro Henry's probably inductor, lots of diodes, as I say. So they're probably using four of those in a bridge configuration. There do appear to be five. There's a resistor there. Um, there's a five pin where well, it looks like a SOT23 controller chip. So this is presumably just um, an LED driver chip. But I wonder what the configuration of these LEDs is because you've got six, six, um, so eight lots of six, which look like they're in series. But on the top here, we've got nine. So I can't believe they've built um, a huge series string and this boost converter is 
boosting the voltage up to, I don't know, a high voltage in the sort of multi tens of volts range. I don't know. I'm just interested to know um, what the arrangement of LEDs is. So this is a 107. So that's um, 10 microfarads. No, no, it's 100 microfarads, isn't it? Yeah, 100 microfarads, uh, 50 volts. My guess is tantalum. Now, it's just sort of considering a reverse engineer with circuit diagram, but these boards, which have these opaque coatings on and notoriously difficult to shine a light through. Actually, let's try that. No, I mean, no light is coming through that PCB. The only way you can see the, uh, where the tracks go is to use reflected light off that PCB. So the other thing I suppose I could do is, um, well, put a knife to this thing, cut it open, cut this sort of squidgy, um, rubbery silicone stuff, uh, and see if I can uh, pick off some voltages from various points on these LEDs. Might give that a try. But uh, just once more illuminated, because it does look very pretty in its illuminated state. Oh, and this can be my thumbnail for this video, can't it? Yeah, that'll look good. Um, so now I get to destroy it, which does seem a bit of a shame, really, but they had more of these. I mean, if I'm really desperate to own them, well, they're only a pound each. I can go back and get some more. Well, not that. I'm not that desperate. They just look really pretty. So is that going to peel apart? Ah, interesting. This uh, silicon stuff, actually, it's breaking into individual pieces. The way it's breaking up is more like glass. It's... Uh, curious stuff it's sort of semi-flexible but also semi-solid hmm i'm not sure how well that's going really this stuff looks really yummy looks like sort of um no flavor wine gums probably not a good idea to eat it got to try and get this stuff off without destroying things like the inductor because i quite like it to still work when i finish so that i can take some voltage measurements. Maybe the best place to measure the voltages would be on pins of that chip if I can get my probes in there. Now remarkably perhaps um, that chip actually has a number on it. I think it says 1360 or maybe 136D so it would be worth looking that up wouldn't it? Right I appear to have struck gold because I found the ZXLD 1360 which is a one amp led driver with internal switch now interestingly this is a continuous mode inductive step down converter so if you put 12 volts in this thing is going to put less than 12 volts out now if we look at the application circuit we can see the chip it needs a capacitor we saw a capacitor low value resistor uh, this says 0.1 ohms we'll have another look at that a shock key diode there was one extra diode on that board wasn't there Inductor, 47 microhenries, that's exactly what we've got. And interestingly, look, three LEDs in series. Now that makes the six LEDs along each row here and the nine LEDs here, that makes that work because um, we've got three groups of three, they're probably in series parallel. And in each of these uh, rows, we've got two groups of three, although there would have to be a break between these two. I wonder if I could see that. But anyway, I'm pretty sure um, that's what this thing is. So the maximum voltage coming out of that chip is not even worth measuring it, really. Um, it's going to be less than 12 volts because, because it's a step down. And it simply creates, um, well, presumably current limited uh, supply to clusters of three LEDs. And uh, one of the applications for this thing is low voltage halogen replacement LEDs and that's exactly what this is. This is a replacement for a classic halogen bulb. In fact in the shop uh, next to these there were some halogen versions. Um, I don't know whether they were 16 watt they might have been. I don't honestly know I didn't look but yes they had the halogen versions. The halogen ones of course were quite a bit smaller but the same uh, pin arrangement there. Um, this says on here AC 12 volts and of course the halogen version uh, runs off AC 12 volts but this one has to have four diodes. The fifth diode presumably is the one on this circuit diagram. It shows it as a shock key. 
Um, the four may not be shock keys, or they could be shock keys, doesn't really matter, I suppose, for the uh, rectification of AC to DC. Um, the fifth one is probably that, which is part of the buck converter circuit. Um, is this resistor a low value? Yes, that says R39. So to my mind, that's 390 milliohms. But yeah, what an interesting lamp. Um, off the shelf buck controller um, LED driver chip. Massive um, tantalum capacitor. Almost tempted to uh, to keep. Oh, well, I'll keep this anyway. I never throw things like this away. Uh, obviously, I'll throw this edible. No, it's not edible. It's not edible. This uh, this uh, wine gummy stuff away. But yeah, what an interesting lamp. 57 LEDs I've worked out because there are 12 on each of these boards. So that's 48 plus 9. That's 57. Let's light it up one more time because it's just quite beautiful, isn't it? Fantastic lamp. Um, Should I be this fascinated by a light bulb? Is there something wrong with me? But these things are fascinating things, aren't they? Cheerio.